Hello and welcome to Nick Grit. In today's video, we are going to make cute little tiny baby bunnies. So I used my pom-poms from my last tutorial to make the tails for these cute little bunnies. And I'm actually taking the same pattern that I did for, I'm gonna move all of these out of the way. I'm taking the same pattern for my baby bird and I'm gonna be doing that for the main part of the bunny. I thought this was super cute and a really nice, fun, quick thing that you can do for Easter. So uh, timestamps right here for the part of the baby bird where you do the body. So I'm not going to go over how to do the baby uh, bunny body. I'm actually gonna start out with just this base right here where I have the pom-pom attached to the back and I've already done the baby bird body on the um, baby bunny basically. Lots of baby words going on right now. Uh, I also wanted to show off what you can do with yarn that is the velvet blanket yarn. Look at the size difference between these two. So if you're looking to do something like this, but you want it to be a little bit larger, you could get some velvet yarn and use a size I or just go a couple sizes lower than what I would usually use, which is my D3. Um, you could easily just use an eye hook and that would work out really well with this velvet yarn. I used just some yarn and I actually made a pom-pom with yarn that was from the nose embroidery. So that was pretty easy. And in my next tutorial, we're gonna go over how to turn the baby bird pattern, so this little guy, into the duck. I absolutely love how these turned out. I need to put that on my hooks. I have too many things going on on my desk at one time, but I'm going to show how to make these really cute little ducks. I love how these turned out as well, especially the little mallard version and their little feet. So I'm going to show how to turn the baby bird, uh, change the beak on that and how to add little feet to make it a duck. All right. So assuming you went to the timestamps for the body and I'm assuming you already have the pom-pom and you have the main body. In this tutorial, we're gonna go over how to make the ears. So I already have one ear made and I'm gonna show you how to make the other ear. And I'm going to show you how I embroider his little face to do a quick little Easter bunny. That way this video is not over an hour long because I already have this body done essentially. For this tutorial, you're going to need some yarn. I am using about 12 inches of black and 12 inches of pink for the embroidered nose and little mouth region. I'm also going to be using, I love this yarn, Metallic, which is a Hobby Lobby specific yarn. And this is a size four worsted weight yarn. I love the little extra metallic texture it has. It gives a little bit of an extra kind of glittery effect. I used that for the pink, the white, and I also made a purple version. I believe they also have a blue version, but that is currently being wrapped up in, it's this color. It's being wrapped up in my baby whale video, basically. I think this one's called Aqua or something. Yeah, Aqua Sparkle. So you will also need some polyfill. Uh, get a pound pack of this, like I said, in my baby bird video, and you'll be able to make a whole army of little baby bunnies and little baby ducks and little baby birds. Uh, you'll also, again, need your little pom-poms, add that to the bottom, but that's with the same yarn. And I have a tutorial on how to do the little pom-poms in my previous video, as I've already stated. And I'm also going to be using my Furls crochet hook. You can use any kind of crochet hook. I'm using a D3 or a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I love this specific one because it's ergonomic and it's really nice. Links down below if you're interested in one of your own. I am an affiliate with them, but I was always in love with Furls crochet hooks, even before they asked me to become an affiliate. So I love my Furls crochet hook. And I'm also going to be using a darning needle. So, oh, and some safety eyes. I'm using these, these are nine to 12 millimeter. I, I don't remember if they're nines or 12s, honestly. I just have a giant bag full of them and I don't remember what I had ordered. Oh, and if at any point you get confused, you can download the printable PDF for this as well. It is on Ravelry, so you can get that down below. It is free for the first week, but if you've not, reached it in time for the first week, then you can, I believe it turns to $3 after that. Um, there's also a screenshotable little slide that'll pop up right after this that you can take a screenshot of, of the pattern as well, so you can get it that way as well. So let's go ahead and get started on the ears. So for this, I'm assuming you already know, if you've done the body already, how to single crochet, how to work in the round, increasing, decreasing. I'll show you how I do my versions of those things, but generally you're going to want to be comfortable with that. And also sewing. I'm going to show you how I do it, but again, you're going to want to be comfortable with it. I'm going to make a 
little slip knot right here and I cannot, for the life of me, again, make a magic ring. So what I wind up doing is just doing the chaining method. And what you do in order to do that is you're going to chain and chain two. So I've chained one and I chained two. And what I do next is I go into the very first chain that I created. I skip the second chain and I go back into the first. And for this, I'm going to place five single crochet. So one, two, three, four, and five. I have this giant hole just hanging out here. I'm gonna pull my tail just like I did for my beginning. And I'm doing five single crochet instead of the six. I think I like the shape of that a lot more. So that's why I'm doing that basically. We're going to go into our first single crochet from our original stitches and we're going to increase every single one of these stitches. So the way that I increase is I go in through the front loop only and then I go through both loops to increase my second stitch. I like how that looks and I explained this in my original Baby Birdie video. So first front loop, then through both loops and increase. I'm increasing every single stitch. So I'm gonna go from five stitches up to 10. This is my fourth stitch increase. And now I'm gonna pull my yarn a little bit. There we go. We're gonna go through this one and then both of them. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 stitches on our work. We're going to then increase another five stitches evenly across those stitches. And in order to do that, we need a single crochet one increase, single crochet one, increase, so on and so forth, because we're doing it evenly across that. So again, I'm going through the front loop only, one. If you're going through both loops only, that is fine as well. I just prefer it this way. And then I'm going to increase the next stitch. Pull out some more yarn, single crochet one, go into the next stitch and increase. I'm gonna do that all the way around. One and increase both stitches. One and increase both stitches. And I believe this is our last increase. So one and increase. I'm gonna count to make sure because I don't remember if this is our last one or that was. I'm pretty sure this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. We have fifteen stitches. And what I like to do here is I'm gonna take my tail and actually pull it through that final stitch just to show where my marker is. I'm essentially using it as a marker. I'm just gonna pull my tail a little bit. That way it's a little bit more closed. And now I'm going to single crochet around for three rounds. So all 15 of those stitches, I'm just gonna maintain 15 stitches for three rounds around. One, two, three, four, five, six. So rows four through six, we are just gonna single crochet around and I'll be right back and I'll show you how we taper it and make it so that it closes up. It's pretty quick and pretty easy. Okay, so we've gone around three rounds and now what we're gonna do for row seven is we're going to single crochet three and decrease and I'll show you how I decrease. So one, two, three, four and five together. I go through the front loops like so, just like I do over in my body video. And I just go through the front loops and I single crochet them together. So I'm trying to go from 15 down to 12 stitches. So one, two, three, four and five together. And our final repetition, two, three, four, and five together. I also like to take my tail and pull that down if I can get it. It's inside there kind of tight. There we go. I also like to take my tail and pull it forward. That way it's just forward and I can keep track of where my stitches are. We're going to single crochet around for 12 stitches for row eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oops, seven, 
eight, nine, ten, eleven. Pull my yarn out a little bit more. Eleven and twelve. And twelve. So now we have one last row to do. And here we want to decrease two more stitches and get our stitches down to 10. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm going to single crochet one, two, three, four, and then decrease. We're going from 12 stitches down to 10 and we're just gonna do two repetitions of this. So we're just decreasing two stitches this row. And how I do my second decrease is I just skip the last one. So one, two, three, four, I skip the fifth stitch of that repetition and then I go into the sixth. That way I'm still skipping it and decreasing it, but now I'm just gonna slip stitch into our last stitch, like so. And you'll notice that this is not pinched yet. It is not looking like it does on the head. So we do something different in order to get it to where it needs to be. I'm gonna pull that through like so we're gonna take our tail and pull that out we're gonna take our tail and pull that out i just kind of let it go back inside the ear that way it's not like taking away from it it's not stuffing it either but it's just not like taking away from it we're gonna take our darning needle and what we're going to do is essentially take our ear and kind of pinch it and sew it like so we're just gonna pinch it like this and I'm going to take my darning needle and I'm gonna sew my tail through the bottom stitches after I've pinched it so like that I'm gonna go through this stitch and like this I kind of just try to get it as flat as possible I'm gonna go through the center stitches like that and then I'm gonna go through like that and then I'm gonna go back the other way. That way it kind of makes it a bit more even. And then on top of that, it makes it a bit more sturdy. And now I'm back at the front. I'm gonna go through those stitches, anything that looks like it's kind of raised. And then you can choose to just do this, but I like to go through the bottom row like so. And then I'm gonna go back through these stitches like that. And now I have two ears that I can attach to the top of my little bunny. And I like to do it like this. So I'm gonna take my ear and line up with the top of my eyeball. I'm going to stab it through it. it sounds so violent, but it's not. We're just assembling him, it's fine. And I'm going to just kind of pull, go up into the stitches, go this way. Go back through my stitches. Go through the sides some more. Try not to rip the metallic on the inside because it likes to try to go its own way sometimes. And go that way. Go through the back. And now I'm gonna flip my ear and go through on the other side. That way I can get both sides attached. And I try to make it even on both sides, basically. So I'm going to attach this ear. And then I'm going to try to make it match as best I can on the other side. So I try to get it as close as I can to the ear. So now I'm on my last stitch. And I like to go through the bottom. That way the tail won't be as noticeable. So now I have an ear right there. I'm going to attach the other ear and then we'll be right back and I'll show you how I do the little face. I have finished my other ear. It is mostly even. I never get things perfectly even. I just, I, I think that's the charm of Amigurumi. And what we're going to do next is we're going to do our little pink nose. I do the pink nose first. That way the little X can kind of cup it and make it look a bit more even. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the bottom and kind of pop out where I want the nose. So roughly centered between the eyes and kind of on the lower half of the eyes basically so i'm going to pull that and kind of just let that hang out there for a minute and then we're going to go on the other side like so and pull 
and then going to keep doing that and kind of try to make it so that it's layered basically as layered as I can comfortably get it and going back and forth through the sides basically I'm actually pretty happy with that that is too high I'm gonna go back down lower so that way it's not as high I don't want it that high we're gonna do that, actually. I'm pretty content with how that looks. I only need to go around four or so times, and then I'm pretty happy with it. Oh, actually, I'm not happy with that. That doesn't look great. So we're gonna actually undo that. Kinda just pull it up with your darning needle. I'm gonna go lower, yeah. I went too high. See, you make mistakes, it's fine. You can always undo it. Yarn is always something you can undo. So let's try that again. There we go. That looks marginally better. All right. I'm going to call that good. I'm going to keep this kind of attached for right now. I'm going to take my black yarn, and this is where I do things a little bit differently. I'm going to pair up my ends and make it so that they are even, and then kind of just pull it so that they are straight. We're then again going to go through the bottom. I'm going to put my darning needle up above the nose where it was and pull up. And again, I'm going to leave a nice good tail right there. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it down through wherever I want the end of my little X to go. So I'm going to put it right there. And I'm going to take my darning needle and kind of angle it up into the top part where I want it again. It's going slightly above the nose. So we're gonna hold this to keep this angle straight. I know it's a little hard. And then I'm gonna push up to make it so that it looks the way I want it to. And then we're gonna do that and kind of lightly pull on it. If you need to pull on a specific side, you can do that. And then we're just gonna take our remaining tail and then try to angle it the right way. Make this as straight as you can, and then I'm going to put that through here, I think. Yeah, that actually looks pretty darn good. I'm pretty happy with that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut our tails. I actually might angle this again through a different port right there, so it's a little bit further away. There we go. And that is pretty much it. I'm just going to cut all my tails. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. I like to kind of tug on it, but not too much. And then you can kind of pull and push on your amigurumi to kind of make it go inward like that. That way you can't see all the different colors, especially if you've got like, say, like right here, you've got a lighter toned uh, amigurumi. It is less hide, it's less easy if you have a contrasting color to hide it in your amigurumi and that is pretty much all there is to this cute little bunny it is very easy once you have the little mane head done and you've got these little pom-poms you can make a ton of these little critters to put in your easter basket or just in your bunny themed spring themed any kind of activity you have going on i really like how these turned out it's super cute especially if you use the velvet yarn as well they come out so much larger when you use velvet yarn. I ended up using normal yarn for the pom-pom tail just because velvet yarn is already kind of sheddy as it is. It sheds a lot and it's awful. So I just hot glued my little bunny tails on, makes it nice and firm, it's not going anywhere. You could probably also embroider the eyes as I bang my camera for good luck. And generally, I really like how these two patterns turned out. They're super cute and stay tuned for the super adorable duck version of the little birdie. I think I'm not going to make too, too many more of these types of bodies, but if you think of an animal that would be really cute with this shape little body, let me know down below what you think down below. And before we go, I would like to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters. Without your support, we wouldn't be able to grow as a channel. So thank you for your generous pledges. If you're interested, go to patreon.com slash knit and you can see the types of rewards that we have for our patrons there. Free patterns and all the stuff like that. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the little bell, do all the YouTube things before you leave if you want to see more videos like this. And until next time, guys, bye!